Celebrate Freedom Ministries have been called by God to raise disciples who will make a difference in the kingdom. Disciples who will preach the gospel, heal the sick, and raise the dead. If you desire to be personally discipled, we invite you to join our partners program and begin to fulfill your God-given calling and purpose. To join the Partners Program, visit our website, Celebrate Freedom Ministries, and join our Partners Program today. Mina and Yvonne have been called to bring God's transformative love to this generation. They have been powerfully used by God to preach the gospel to nations with the manifestations of signs, wonders, and glorious healings. You can be a part of what God is doing. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries. Hello, everyone. So excited to be joining you tonight. It's going to be awesome. I can. I've been reading the chat and I'm just so thankful for your open heart um, and your love. So thank you so much. Um, it makes a huge difference to me. It really, really does. So let me tell you something. Today is going to be a night of miracles. Today is going to be a night where God's going to be doing some amazing things. And uh, um, I'm really excited about it. And I tell you something. Um, we're talking about first things first. And this has been a message that God has been pressing on my heart for the past, God, like at least three weeks. And I've just been like, Lord, I, I, it's just hard for me to, to, to do this message. But every time I pray, I hear first things first. And I tell you what I heard and why I heard this. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of testimonials. Um, but before I do that and before I pray, I just want to take a second to welcome every single one of you. I can see all of your names and your comments. I'm going to be praying for each and every name, literally just laying my hand um, on those comments and just believing God for a night of revival and a night of miracles. So before I do that and before I open up in prayer, there's just some really important announcements that I want to make to you. The first one is that we have an upcoming healing service um, on February 20th. And of course, all of our healing services are completely free. Um, and we don't even collect an offering for them. God said this to us very clearly. So please register. If you know anyone who is sick in their body, someone who is in need of healing, please get them to register. And the way to do that is just to get to our website which is celebratefreedomministries.org and just to register for the event. Um, the second thing is, I'm going to put that up, but I would kindly ask to join our mailing list and we've made it easy. All you've got to do is text Celebrate Freedom to this number, which is 22828. That's all you got to do. And as soon as you do that, you join our mailing list. And the reason I say that is that we just, everything in today's world is just, there's no security in everything. So I want to be able to get through to you. Otherwise, if anything happens with social media, then we're not connected. So make sure that you join the mailing list because it's just the easiest way to get connected. Um, the next one is please subscribe to the channel because then you don't miss any of the prophecies or the miracles or the messages that God's given us. So you just get, um, you know, an update. And the last thing before I open up in prayer is that I want to say thank you to all of our monthly partners, those that are trusting God, carrying the Lord with us and doing amazing uh, things for the Lord. We just want to say thank you. Um, we could not do what we do without your support. So I really just want to say um, it is so appreciated. And if the Lord puts it on your heart to support Celebrate Freedom Ministries monthly, let me tell you, you will be doing some amazing work for the Lord because we are all about discipleship. We're all about the Holy Spirit, miracles, healing, signs, and equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. So if the Lord puts that on your heart, please um, obey the Holy Spirit and do that. 
Well, without any further ado, let me um, open up in prayer. So just lift up your hands to God. And, and I just want you to begin to just invite the Holy Spirit. This is not a message for everyone. This is a message for God's covenant people. This is a message for the remnant. This is a message for those who are aligned with what Holy Spirit is saying to the church. So just lift up your hands and just begin to um, pray. Cry out to him and just say, Lord, speak to me tonight. Do something that's impossible in my life. Father, I just thank you. Holy Spirit, I invite your presence. And I just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, intensify your presence in every home, everyone who is believing for you to speak to them right now in the name of Jesus. I bind every demonic spirit of depression, oppression, heaviness in the heart, every attack against your saints right now, even attacks in their body. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I bind it and I release your power. I release your love, Father, that they would feel your embrace like never before. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Lord. Intensify your presence. I release your presence through every screen and in every home. Father, that you would cover your people with the blood of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for this precious time where you will speak to us and all of God's people said amen and amen and amen well let me let me get started today I'm going to be talking about first things first and uh, when we talk about first things I remember we released a prophetic word at the beginning of this year and it was out of Isaiah 66 and verses 12 and it basically said this that this year, we are entering into a river of peace and prosperity. And this is going to be a tough word to believe. Why? Because as a global economy, everything seems to be falling apart and collapsing. And so we need to believe and understand that this is not a word for the world. This is a word for God's covenant people. Although um, I know and I understand that this year started with many of us coming under attack. And if you're hearing me now and you just feel that you are coming or you have come under an attack since um, the beginning of the year, let me know who you are because we're going to be praying. But this is what I feel. And so as I was in prayer, the Lord made it so clear that this word is for his covenant people. And I was like, okay, Lord, what, what do you want me to say or what do you want me to teach? And the Lord said this to me. He said, those covenant people, they live by biblical principles. We live by that. So we cannot want to expect God to bless us supernaturally when we are not even abiding by um, the principles where God laid out for us. And we could be like, yes, Yvonne, but I received everything Christ Jesus. Absolutely. But every time you follow those principles, then that's when you get to see miracles manifest in your life. And part of the prophetic word was back-to-back -back miracles, that we are believing and declaring that there will be back-to-back -back miracles. But those people who will experience back-to-back -back miracles are those people who will begin to follow the biblical principles. And I'm about to share one with you now. So I'm going to be talking and sharing today miracles. I will do a biblical teaching, but I really just want to open up my heart and let you know how all this started. So we just came from Australia and uh, both me and Mina have always been living by the principle of first fruit, always. Uh, and this year, at the beginning of the year, we prepared our first fruit. And we sowed it into our church, the church we go to, because we understand the power of first fruits. 
And we know that because we have experienced miracle after miracle after miracle whenever we um, sowed into first fruits. But then when this year started, I just felt, oh, I, I didn't really want to share this message. I'll be honest, because I didn't want people to think, are you asking us for money? Um, it just brought heaviness to my heart. So I was like, I'm not going to share this message. I'm just going to lay it aside. And then our daughter, who she graduated um, just a couple of weeks ago, and she just got her first job. And uh, we did not ask her for this. And without me or Mina realizing, she sews in her first week of work. And I was blown away. And I called her up and I said, may the Lord bless you a thousand times. And she said something to me. And she said this to me. She said, mom, dad, why are you surprised when I did this? Didn't you teach me that that's how we should live as believers? And I was like, whoa, that just hit me. And I felt like the Lord is saying to me, when you don't teach my people about the miracles that are unleashed in first fruits, then you are uh, the hindrance. You are stopping those miracles and you're making it all about, you know, about you and about what people might think of what you teach. You need to abide by my word and you need to teach those principles and allow me to do what I um, can do. So I'll be honest, I was repenting the last two weeks and I said, okay, Lord, I will share. But the Lord said this to me, you need to also share what I've done in your life every time you have sowed a first fruit. And so I'm going to share two testimonies and those testimonies happened back when we were in business. So right now we are completely consecrated unto God. We um, only run the ministry, but back in the days in Australia, we actually used to run a business and I'm going to share two unbelievable testimonies when we sowed in our first fruit. The first one took place about 18 years ago. And at that time, we, um, we, this amazing business opportunity presents itself and we go ahead and we open up this business. And just before we open the doors, we find out that there was this license that we're meant to get. And for a lot of technical reasons, we can't get it. And so we were so upset. We could still trade, but a lot of customers won't come to us because that particular license allowed people a discount on their medication. So it was really hard for us. And we were under intense and immense pressure. We had a store. We had to pay rent, staff, stock, everything. And... And we knew that when we opened up our door, this business is going to fail because of that missing license. And so as we were trying to um, work out how we're going to get this license, this person comes into our life and he said this. He said, so the first month trading of this business. And I remember I was like, it was almost like he hit me in the stomach. It was like, you can't do that. We can barely pay for anything, let alone you're asking us to do that. That's impossible. And I remember Mina is a man of faith and integrity. And he said this to me, he said, Yvonne, we need to believe the man of God and we need to do that. And I remember that we believed God. And that's the thing. Whenever you sow your first fruit, you've got to do it in faith because Jesus is God's first fruit. And God sowed Jesus in faith. The Bible says this in Romans 8, that he is the first fruit of all who rose from the dead. He's the first one. But the Bible also says that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, God sowed Jesus before we ever believed in Jesus or came to faith. So we got to learn that first fruits has to be sowed in faith even before you see your miracle. So we did that. 
And um, back in the day, it was a lot of money. And it was like, oh, God, it really hurts, especially when we don't even know how we're going to pay everybody. Well, let me tell you, God did the biggest miracle because that license that we were waiting for literally just came through the fax machine. Don't ask me how, don't ask me what happened, but basically the court said the case is finished. We changed the laws in your favor. Just have your license and trade. And praise be to God because that ended up being a wonderful store. But it was the delay was broken and the miracle came when there was a first fruit offering. The next miracle that I want to share took place about seven to eight years ago. And at that time, again, another amazing opportunity presented itself. And we were just like, okay, God, we're going to believe you. This, this, this looks like it's you. And it was about August. And we were like, you know, just waiting. And every month, nothing's happening. Nothing is happening. August comes, September comes, November comes, December comes. And at that time, we were so desperate to have this business up and running because it was just affecting a lot of other things. And I remember it was the night of the 31st of December. So it was just a couple of hours and we're going to come into the new year. And I remember me and Mina said this to each other, that we're going to sow in faith for that business in January for what's coming. And we literally emptied our bank account. We took that money and we walked up to the altar and we sowed it into another ministry. And we just said, God, we are just believing you. Well, I tell you what, 15th of January of this month, this miracle was released. So why am I sharing this with you? Because first fruits is a biblical principle and many of God's people neglect it and ju they just think, you know, I'm going to enter into a river of peace and prosperity without me having to do anything. Well, that is an illegal miracle because I have not even believed God for that. So this is the time this month of saying, God, I am believing you with my first fruit. And you begin to align your first fruit with a miracle that you want God to do. So let me tell you something. What is the benefits of first fruit? I am going to share with you Romans 8, 16. And Romans 8, 16 is so amazing. It's so simple. It's so easy. But I'm going to try and put it on the screen because this is what it says. It's actually an amazing verse. And this is what it says. For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. So let me stop there. First fruit belongs to God. God already said that. And it said that if it is holy, then it, it consecrates everything else that is coming this year. And then it says holy means set apart for the Lord. So when the first fruit is given unto God, and what an amazing time to do that in the beginning of the year. You might say, I'm sowing one week of my salary. I am sowing the first month or the first month of trading or the first day, whatever it is, but it has to be first. And the Bible says that when the first fruit is holy, in other words, consecrated, separated unto God, the lump is also holy. In other words, the first portion redeems the rest. I would love if someone writes that down in the chat. The first portion blesses increases, sanctifies the rest of what God's about to do this year. So you are blessing the rest of your income. You are blessing the rest of what God is bringing. It says, and if the root is holy, so are the branches. So we need to understand that this is a principle God laid out in the book of Exodus. And we know that God's principles are eternal, they are everlasting, and there is a reason for them. 
when we come to the um, story of Cain and Abel, uh, so many people are like, why would God do that to Cain? Like Cain was so nice. He was trying to present unto God um, just like Abel. But let me tell you what actually happened. This is mentioned in Genesis 4, um, and then it's from verses 3 to 5. It says this. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit from the ground to the Lord. Notice that it says, and it came to pass. In other words, he was just, you know, doing life. And, you know, one day his crops grew and he just thought, wow, I'm going to get around it and I'm going to give God an offering. But then it says, um, but Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock. And then the Bible says that God accepted Abel's sacrifice, but did not accept Cain. Why? Because Abel offered the first fruit as soon as he saw that first fruit come he was like that does not belong to me that belongs to God I am going to give this to God because I understand that if I do everything else will be blessed and so we need to understand that this is such a beautiful principle. Um, and when we do this, we have seen so many unbelievable miracles when we begin the year of God, I am putting you first. Isn't that amazing that when Jesus taught about the kingdom, he said this, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be laid out for you. And he's talking to people who worry about food and clothing, the basics of life. And many of us today, why is there a fear in giving first fruits? Because there is a fear attached to it. That fear says, but if I do, will I have enough? But if I do, will I be able to pay my mortgage? Or will I be able? Well, the Lord is saying to you that when you honor me with that first fruit, I will be blessing you abundantly. You will supernaturally, in actual fact, there's a supernatural blessing when you come to the Lord with that first fruit. And someone said it's by faith. Yes, it is absolutely done by faith. Because the time as you're presenting, you're like, oh God, this is hard, you know, but that's what that, that has been a biblical principle all along. For example, think of Jericho. When they entered the promised land and they conquered Jericho, God said to them, because Jericho is the first city, you need to consecrate it as that first thing to me. And we get to know that when that didn't happen, they began, the battles began, the defeat began. Why? Because they did not honor the principle of first fruit. One of my favorite scriptures is Exodus 23. It reads like this in verses 19. The first of the first fruit of your land you shall bring to the Lord. So it's not actually the first. It's the first of the first. So it's that first week. It's that first month. It's that first thing that you begin to earn this year. That is the, the time that you say, God, this belongs to you. And you can be sure that God is going to be doing something abundantly with this fruit. Let me tell you something. Every time you cannot give God. In actual fact, money is a test from the Lord. And you need to understand how we handle money reveals volumes about our priorities, loyalties, and affection. I am faced. And, and the thing is, it's basically going to come down to this. Am I the owner of my possession? Or am I a steward? If I am the owner, then it's a different story. But if I am a steward, then I will understand that this is God's portion. And I am separating this unto God. I give it to God. And I begin to literally expect those miracles to unleash in your life. And let me tell you, we gave our first fruit last week. 
And even since then, there's been miracle after miracle after miracle. Why? Because, and we feel that blessing. We feel like, wow, God, there's a blessing upon 2023. We shall lack nothing. You are going to bring those green pastures. You are leading us beside still waters. You will be restoring our soul. Why? Because we honored you. We trusted you. We put a value on who you are. This is actually so beautiful. I want to share with you um, in Proverbs. Proverbs is one of our favorite ones. It says this. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions. The word honor means put value. You can't just honor someone without giving or putting a value on them. It says, and with the first fruits of all your increase. This is not, people are like, well, does that apply today? Absolutely, because Jesus said, I did not come to cancel the law. I came to fulfill what was spoken. So those um, principles, they are eternal. And those who will believe them, they will see the blessing of God over their life. It says this, and with the first fruit of all your increase. And then it says what happens. It says, so your bonds will be filled with plenty. I prophesy that to you. I prophesy to you that as we begin to pray and as you begin to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit, that 2023, your bonds will be filled with plenty. In other words, there will be no lack and your vats will overflow with new wine. So there's going to be an overflow. There's going to be a first you're going to be feeling that plenty. This is a really important word because the Lord had given me a word last week and I'm going to share it next week. But we are coming into a scary year where there's going to be shortage of food and getting clean water. There will be a lack in even doing that. And the Lord had given me a specific prophetic word, which we're going to be releasing hopefully on Monday. But when we come and we honor the Lord with our first fruits, we enter into this divine supernatural protection because we get to understand that our barns will be filled with plenty and our vats will overflow with new wine. And I love how it says new wine. There's going to be an overflow over your life. And it's going to be so difficult to understand because it's not going to make sense to so many people. It's not going to make sense. Someone is praying and saying, Lord, no more financial lack. Absolutely. We are called to be blessed. We are called to be abundantly blessed. And we are called to be the head and not the tail. And a lot of us, whenever we speak about money, people get a little bit funny. They don't mind hearing a prophecy. They don't mind praying, get, receiving prayer for healing. But when God blesses you financially, you will be able to help someone else. This is what God said to Abraham. Abraham, I am going to bless you. But not just that. I want to make you a blessing. So the Lord is not just interested in you being being blessed. The Lord is interested in making you a blessing for somebody else. It's almost like the Lord commands a blessing. So I really just want to challenge you. I love where it says that our cups will overflow. That overflow word has been just, I've been hearing it in the spirit. And the reason why I've been hearing it is because I've been studying Psalm 23. And the reason being is that this is the year of 2023. And in that Psalm, David says this, that you pull out before me um, a table before my enemies. In other words, I was explaining last night to our discipleship group that in Western culture, if someone's wealthy, they may show off their possessions by buying a new car or a new house. But in Middle Eastern culture, they don't do that. 
They put at a table. What does that mean? They will bring to the table so much more food than you can ever think or imagine. And when you see this abundance of a feast, you're like, wow, this person must be wealthy. Well, the Lord prepares a table in front of your enemies. In other words, this is, I'm, I'm about to prophesy this to you. He is about to prepare a table in front of your enemies. He does not care who is watching. He is blessing you in the presence of your enemies. And even your enemies are going to be offended at God because they're going to be like, God, what is special about them? Why are you blessing them so much? And the same thing happened when the prodigal son came back home what was happening the community and the older brother was angry because the father lavished so much love on this young boy the older brother did not think that he deserves it but because he stepped into the embrace of his father his father said go and kill the fattened calf why? Because this son of mine has come back home. So in Psalm 23, David says that he puts at the stable. He doesn't care who's watching. He doesn't care how they feel about the Lord blessing me. And then he says this. He said, my cup, he anoints my head with oil. And then he says, my cup overflows. And a lot of people in the Western culture will not understand what does it say by my cup overflows. And that's because in Western culture, when you visit someone and they give you a drink, they will wait until you finish your drink and then you can go and help yourself with more. In Middle Eastern culture, it's not like that. You sit and the host will, as soon as you take one sip, and the host will pour out more and pour out more and pour out more and pour out more until your cup overflows. And what is amazing is that he anoints your head with oil. This oil is not for consecration only. It's not for inauguration only. It's for ce celebration. So the Lord is telling someone right now, get ready for the table. Get ready for the feast. While there's going to be a lot of food shortages, while it's going to be a tough year for many, you are going to be sitting with me at my banquet table in the presence of your enemy they will see how I, what i will do in your life this year and that's going to cause them to be angry at me but that is their problem you will sit and you will rest and you will indulge in my goodness so many of us we're getting ready to sit at that table. We're getting ready for God to, to lavish his love on us in a whole new way, in a whole deeper way. But what we need to do is that we honor the Lord. This Psalm, uh, Proverbs 3, 9, it says, honor the Lord with your possessions. And it says this, it says, we, and with the first fruit of all of your increase. As we begin to pray in just a couple of seconds, begin to ask Holy Spirit, Lord, I did not connect to this by mistake or by chance. I want to honor you and I am ready. I am getting ready to align myself with what you're about to do for me this year because I understand that when I give the first fruit unto you, then the rest will be blessed. This is the portion which blesses the rest. It is the portion which redeems the rest. And I enter into a place of two words, filled with plenty and overflow with new wine and i want you to write this down even as you are coming to give the lord that offering i want you to say i'm accessing proverbs 3 9 by faith lord i'm giving you this first fruit because i heard this teaching i was touched by those testimonies i am believing that you are redeeming the rest of this year and that there's gonna be a blessing supernatural blessing coming out of nowhere and, and I love how 
Psalm 23 ends. He says this. He says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. And when I thought about the word follow me, surely follow me is not a nice word. I wouldn't like to be followed. But then the thing is, I thought about, hang on a second, but who am I being followed with? I am being followed by goodness and by mercy. And as I was studying the word mercy, it says those who are in relational covenant. That's another meaning for it. So God is going to be following you from the back. No wonder why the book of Hebrew says this. Look to the author and the finisher. Who is the author? of your, Jesus. So when you look to him, it means that he's standing in front of you. But when he follows you with goodness and mercy, it means he's behind you. This is going to be a year of embrace. This is going to be a year where he is going to be in front and he is going to be in, from behind and he is going to be following me. In other words, pursuing me. And the word following me with goodness and mercy means that you've got to be moving for goodness and mercy to follow you because when someone follows someone that someone has to move so that goodness and mercy will follow you so I'm speaking to you prophetically that as you do this I actually just heard a testimony um, in church as they were giving their first fruit offering and this young man said this he said that I, I was about to get married and I wanted to buy a ring so I can enga uh, enga become engaged to my fiance. And when he had the money for the ring, he heard the Lord say, so that as your first fruits, the money. And he did that. And he said, God supernaturally paid off all of my wedding. Another student said that he sowed his first fruit and God supernaturally paid off all his college fees and he graduated college free. Why am I telling you this? It's because God is unleashing those miracles in your life. You're about to be followed by goodness and mercy. You're accessing a place of plenty and overflow. Yes, it is a year of embrace, my sister. I am coming into such an agreement with that word Lord you're embracing me and let me tell you when God has your money God has you because there's such an attachment that we have with money so when we give that to God we break every demonic spirit of mammon and we come and say Lord you are the source my job is not the source. My business is not the source. You are the source. And with this offering, I am coming into a place of abundance. I am honoring you, Father, because this is what your word says. The last verse I want to end up with is Ezekiel 44, 30. It says this, the best of all first fruits of any kind and every sacrifice it to the Lord. This is the command. He's not giving us a suggestion. The first of your first fruit. So it's not the first fruit. It's the first of the first fruit. That is where the miracle is. This is where the blessing is. So I just want to take this time right now and just pray for those people who are hearing me live, for those who will be hearing this later and just come into this agreement with me. And some of you, don't look at the number because it could be a big number and you could be like, oh God, but how can I do that? Trust the Lord. And this is the place where if you trust him, those miracles will be unleashed in your life. So let me pray for you. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, and in the name of King Jesus right now, we honor your word and we honor your principle, Lord, and we thank you because, Father, you are so faithful, God. You are so faithful and everyone, God, who is just obeying your voice, they're entering a place of abundance. Father, in the name of King Jesus, I prophesy a river of peace and prosperity. I prophesy, God, a cup which will overflow 
do, Father. I pro prophesy plenty in the name of Jesus that there shall be no lack, that there shall be financial provision, that businesses that are struggling in the name of Jesus, that this offering will break the curse of financial lack over families, over businesses, that those who cannot find a job, that they will find a job. They will understand that this um, offering, it blesses the rest, it consecrates the lump. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak blessing and Lord, I remove every demonic spirit of fear, every voice of accusation, every voice which says, um, are you really believing this? I silence those voices and I just speak faith. We give this to you in faith, knowing that you are the God of more. You are the God of abundance. You are the God of plenty. We honor your word right now. Every word we read in the word of God, we honor your word and we thank you for what you are going to do. Father, in Jesus' name, we speak miracles. And I prophesy back-to-back -back miracles that every single month shall be marked by a miracle. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are opening up the treasure room of heaven right now and you are releasing blessings that we cannot contain. I just thank you, Father, for what you are doing. We bless and we honor your holy name. And all of God's people said, amen and amen and amen. Well, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. This is this has honestly um, been such an honor just to um, minister to you. It will be great if you want to connect to our website, um, celebratefreedomministries.org. We can be connected. If you are um, trying to send your first fruit, you can also head to the website, Celebrate Freedom Ministries. There's also a text to give um, on the banner below. So we whichever way, but send in a request that you're putting before the Lord, something that you're believing God to do before this month is over, because we want to be able to lay our hands on those prayer needs and just come into agreement and pray with you and just believe God for those miracles to come through. Um, for those that are connected at the end, I just want to share um, those announcements again. I wanted to say that we have an upcoming healing service February 20th. Um, this is completely free, of course. So you can head to the website and you can register. Um, some people said, how do we register? As soon as you get to the website under events, you will be able um, to see this. And you can just register um, to secure your position. Places are running out fast. And we probably can't take so much people because we want to be able to minister to you individually. Subscribe to the channel if you have not, so we could uh, stay connected. Um, and, I, and if you wanted to join our mailing list, I'm going to just put that up again. Text Celebrate Freedom to 22828. And that way, if anything happens to YouTube or I can't reach you anyway, then at least we are um, connected. Um, again, just, and, and I think that pretty much sums it. Um, if you have a prayer need, send it to info at celebratefreedomministries.org. Next Monday, I'm going to be, um, both me and Mina, we are going to be sharing um Really, a prophetic word that the Lord has given us. There's going to be a lot of insight into this year. And uh, there was a lot of things that God showed us, things that are about to happen um, in specific months. So we just wanted to hop on next Monday and just share that and share what we just feel um, and how we should get prepared. And I'm telling you, those that are that are consecrated their finances to God, you have nothing to worry about. Um, it's a time of joy and celebration. So, um, but it's great to hear what the, what the Spirit is saying to the church. So that will be next Monday. We love you. Have a blessed night. Thank you for connecting. Thank you for all of your comments. We bless you. Have a blessed, wonderful night in the name of Jesus. Bye-bye. Let's build the kingdom of God together. Partner with us and support our projects throughout the Middle East, digging water wells, building orphanages, and conducting revival meetings to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries and join our Kingdom Builders program today. 
Celebrate Freedom Ministries have been called by God to raise disciples who will make a difference in the kingdom. Disciples who will preach the gospel, heal the sick, and raise the dead. If you desire to be personally discipled, we invite you to join our partners program and begin to fulfill your God-given calling and purpose. To join the Partners Program, visit our website, Celebrate Freedom Ministries, and join our Partners Program today. Mina and Yvonne have been called to bring God's transformative love to this generation. They have been powerfully used by God to preach the gospel to nations with the manifestations of signs, wonders, and glorious healings. You can be a part of what God is doing. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries. Are you in need of inner healing? Do you need restoration from painful memories, traumas, and hurt? Do you need healing in your body? Join our school to learn aspects of the biblical principles of healing. Walk with a mentor who will guide and support you throughout your journey. Invest in yourself and be free from pain and trauma. Get ready to receive healing and release it to others. Visit Celebrate Freedom Ministries and register today. Are you in desperate need for God's emotional and physical touch? Do you have a heart for the healing ministry? Revealing the Healer covers it all. In her new book, Yvonne talks about fatal experiences which could have ended her life or left her paralyzed if it wasn't for God's healing power. Written by a passionate believer in Christ who experienced divine healing firsthand, Yvonne doesn't hold back from sharing divine keys to releasing God's healing power. Through her book, Revealing the Healer, Yvonne proves to you that healing is your destiny, both to receive and to release to others. Begin to operate with the biblical understanding of sickness and of healing. Understand the full implication of healing in the atonement at the cross. Learn a simple biblical method for walking in divine healing. Discover the secret behind the healing ministry of Jesus. Find out how to overcome common hindrances preventing you from receiving your healing. Receive an impartation to receive your own healing and be used by God. You can get her book by visiting www.celebratefreedomministries.org.